past year's crisis has caused many short-term shocks and has accelerated longer-term shifts. And I'd like to take the opportunity to share with you our key insights around perhaps not the most abrupt, but certainly one of the most sticky driving forces for change. It is seeking brands with purpose. And if you know that the target group of eco-activists will already represent $861 billion on the FMCG market in 2025, are you prepared and well positioned for this? Because at this point, only 22% of consumers can actually name a brand that shows a genuine concern for the environment. So let's use this 15 minutes to see what consumers expect and what actions you can take to seize this behavioral change. At GFK, we take enabling growth from knowledge quite seriously. And while purchasing data surely is the ultimate measure of consumer demand, it is sometimes also a lagging indicator that does not always reflect the complex picture of a consumer's full wants and needs. And that's why we carefully construct a 3D layered picture of where consumers are heading, both by looking at the behavioral household purchasing we measure and their deeper values and motivations. And here the upfront message seems simple. Purpose-led purchasing is on the rise, adding really an activist edge to the meaning of purchasing power. But by adding layers, we do find that despite deeply held beliefs, we sometimes find contradictory behavior, a gap between caring and doing. And it's by helping you understand how to close this gap that we can hopefully contribute even the tiniest bit to helping you grow. And since we are a data-driven company, I'd like to start off with three facts or amounts or numbers, if you will. It's 861 billion, I already mentioned, but it's also 334 billion and a number, it's minus 3.4 billion. And these three facts are truly emblematic for today's topic. And I'll get around supporting my views as to why they are in a bit, but I'm throwing them in now just to ease the shock a bit once we get around them. So let's just have them sink in for a while. When we start by putting seeking brands with purpose within the context of COVID crisis, we really see that regardless of the social and economic uncertainty that has held society hostage, the crisis has truly acted as a catalyst here. Now, when we spotlight Europe, where we see some of the highest incidences of purpose-led buying, nearly one in three Europeans have further strongly altered their behavior towards more sustainable and equitable buying in the past 12 months. And this represents a truly progressive shift. And what has caused the biggest behavioral change in this area is exactly the desire to buy environmentally friendly brands. And we also see that the widening societal gaps has put the desire to buy brands that fight social equality to the forefront, especially amongst those hit hardest by the crisis themselves. And further evidencing the tension between the willingness to act and the ability and know-how to do so is the fact that looking to others for inspiration on how to act sustainably is also a top driver for behavior change. Looking ahead, shoppers only intend to use their purchasing power for purpose even more. Across the board, switching to local products and making a real effort to buy green brands are the top growing behaviors into 2022. And we also see that consumers intend to scrutinize brands about their impact. Our experiences with increased online ordering have certainly contributed to the fact that shoppers are also willing to stop buying you if they are frustrated about the amount of packaging. All of these future behaviors seem crisis proof because whether households are already economically affected by the crisis, concerned they might lose their job and cannot make ends meet, or have been rather resistant to the economic downturn altogether, the preparedness to act is equally high. We are seeing that protecting the environment is rising as a personal value, making it much more a social cultural phenomenon than a socio-economic one. And it is surely not only a European phenomenon either. As we have seen in our annual global sustainability study with our partners Europanel and Kantar across more than 20 countries, the sheer number of eco-activists in FMCG across the globe has risen from 16% in 2019 to 20% already in 2020. And if we assume the same growth rates in the coming years, they will have doubled by 2025. So this is where the first of those three big numbers come in, because together these eco-activists represent 861 billion in FMCG spent. 
So if the green imperative alone would not be convincing enough, the business one surely is. But here comes the crux. While there is a growing cohort of shoppers that are highly concerned about the environment and are taking many prompt actions to reduce their waste, there is still a huge lag between those that want to buy products packed in an environmentally friendly way and those that actually do. And this is what we have entitled the value action gap and it's worth a whopping 334 billion globally in FMCG. It's spent sitting in the green waiting room. But we do see great differences here. Even sometimes between neighboring countries. So whereas the gap between caring and doing is quite sizable in, for example, Denmark, it is rather low in Germany. Not only the levels of eco-activism are higher here, but there is more belief that it's up to the shopper him or herself as well, next to manufacturers, governments, to make the biggest difference. Now, whereas talking about billions is great for impact, it might also feel a bit hazy or unattainable. So let me break it down into a rather more substantial example. And while we dove into the buying behavior in the bottled water category in Germany, such an advanced country in this sense, it's quite exemplary for eco-activism and we came across really truly impactful insights. Everywhere, eco-actives buy less bottled water than their counterparts. But looking at a top retailer in Germany, we learned that there is a 22 million euro opportunity to get to fair share with the eco-actives. And this accounts for more than 50% of their total lag in fair share in the category. We also know that 30% of German households own a machine or tap for carbonized water. And surely not all of them are active users, but those that are actually buy 100 of liters per year less per household. So that's 100 bottles saved or sales missed, depending on your view. So it's these game-changing solutions that really combine the need for convenience, saving money, while also tapping into the green motive at the same time, that will increasingly have an enormous impact on our market. It's a huge value action gap that proves that consumers are waiting for eco-friendly solutions that suit their lifestyle. There's an unsatisfied need for affordable, convenient solutions. And another barrier that really stands in the way is the lack of knowledge and information on how to go green. As we have learned before that shoppers intend to dive into the impact that brands they buy have more, and this hunger for knowledge really needs to be nurtured and facilitated. Shockingly, as stated before, only 22% can name a brand that shows a concern for the environment. And this is partially because the value action gap is not the only gap that needs to be mended. There also is a trust gap that we need to overcome. Only one in three actually believe environmental claims on labels and advertising. And even less trust claims companies make about their environmental practices, as our Consumer Life and Green Gauge study shows. But how to reach your target audience then? Because being able to speak to your potential buyers at the moment of truth in store has been really under pressure last year. Just in the 17 European markets we cover, already a total of 3.4 billion trips were made less than the year before, as shoppers simply went to the store less often. And on top of that, browsing and discovery was highly reduced by speed shopping. So recalling this value action trust gap, facilitating green choice should be an integral part of category management. And again, besides the green imperative, growing shopper demand, there is again a business incentive here as well. Now for this, I'd like to evidence Germany again, really leading the market in eco-activism. It becomes clear that sustainable brands, where sustainability is the incentive to buy and the brands take it beyond just their product offering, really outgrow the market. Whereas growth has averaged 10%, sustainable brands grew by an astounding 19%. And even more worthwhile mentioning are the purpose lifestyle brands that grew even harder. Now, these brands that seamlessly combine lifestyle demands with a huge focus on sustainability as a very important satisfier outgrew the market at 23%. And notably, both did so with much less promotional pressure than the year before or than their competitors in the market. So what is the message we can derive here? Firstly, Shoppers are increasingly willing to use their purchasing power for good. So shoppers will always weigh in costs and added value. But the fact that green consumerism is seen more and more as a badge of honor and as a personal value, shoppers are more willing to pay a premium 
especially when married with convenience and healthy lifestyle demands. So it's all about communicating green lifestyle choices as an enrichment rather than a restraint. Secondly, recent developments in lockdown economies have reduced the natural touch points brands have with shoppers. And the increasing demand for information and accountability should really be recognized and facilitated in the shopper decision process. And thirdly, last but not least, all stakeholders must really unite in the results. Only by making everyone part of the change, making the steps visible along the way and making them personal, the trust gap can be converted into a perpetual behavior change loop. It is along the behavior change loop that we are here to help you seize opportunities. Please visit our dedicated behavior change web area if you want to know more about the forces for change. And be sure to keep an eye out for our next edition of Who Cares Who Does coming to you over the summer. For now, thanks for watching and hope to catch up soon.